For more than 40 years, the work of Broadway's Jerry Herman has defined the great American musical. In fact, he's the only composer lyricist in Broadway history to have had three of his musicals, Hello, Dolly, Mame, and La Caja Fall, run for more than 1,500 performances each. In a rare interview, Jerry, who was literally born on Broadway, talks about his incredible life in the theater. I was born in a hospital room where my mother's window overlooked the marquee of the Winter Garden Theater. And of course, she had no idea that 34 years later, her son's musical Mame would be emblazoned on that marquee. It is probably a cliche to have a gay son who thinks his mother is the most glamorous, wonderful thing in the world. But my mother, Ruth, was all of those things. She was a piano player and singer. She had her own radio show before I was born. My parents loved the musical theater. And the night I, they took me to Andy Get Your Gun, they really created a monster. It really was a turning point. From that moment on, I knew that if there was one dream that I had, it was to write songs like Irving Berlin Road and to give the gift of music to other people the way he had given it to me. So Jerry pursued his dream to write music, and through his teens and 20s, he honed his craft, writing songs for review and small off-Broadway shows. With the premiere of his first Broadway musical, Milk and Honey, in 1961, everything started to change. It got wonderful reviews, and I got nominated for a Tony Award. And I was really swept away. Following the success of Milk and Honey, Jerry was asked by Broadway impresario David Merrick and director Gower Champion to work on a new musical based on Thornton Wilder's play, The Matchmaker. It was to be called Hello, Dolly. I had written the score for Ethel Merman. And when it came time to play it for Ethel, she announced that she never wanted to do another Broadway show. I was devastated, of course, because that was my, my idol and my goal was to, you know, to have her in a show of mine. But Gower said, I have an idea. I worked with a woman named Carol Channing in a review called Lend an Ear, and I think she can be marvelous in this role. Well, it changed my whole life. It was truly love at first sight for both of us. He really was gorgeous. It was love at first sight. And Jerry insists it was mutual. Now you know. I mean, really. Here I had a score that was written for Ethel Merman, and so all of Ethel's, what we call money notes, you know, those high C's, were way out of Carol's range. And to break the ice, I said, Carol, I've always wanted to hear these songs way down in the register that the men sing in. He said, I want Mother Earth. That's what I want. And he said, that's the way I conceived it, and that's the way I always wanted it. He lied in his teeth. No composer wants his song sung down there. And we did it anyway, and I relaxed completely because, and I just said, hello, Harry. Well, hello, Louis. I did do a lot of changing for Carol, and all to the good. We hugged and we laughed, and we had ne never stopped laughing. It was a partnership that worked. When Hello, Dolly! opened on Broadway on January 19, 1964, it was a smash hit. It was the hit of the decade. We won not only 10 Tony Awards and Grammy Awards, but Drama Critics Awards. I had no idea that I was about to follow it with another experience that was as, as satisfying or more satisfying, uh, a little thing called Mame. We were searching for a lady to play Mame. And we had, at this point, honestly seen every lady 
was who was breathing in New York City. I had just done a tremendously exciting musical called Anyone Can Whistle, written by Stephen Sondheim, which had run for exactly nine performances and had closed. So I went home to California with my tail between my legs. I remembered this stunning lady, who of course I knew as a great screen actress, belting out a Sondheim song, and she knocked me out of my seat. And so I picked up the phone and I called our producers. Uh, uh, and I said, I found, I found our main. The producers were hesitant to even audition Lansbury. She was best known for playing matronly roles in films, certainly not for being a glamorous leading lady, but Jerry insisted. And a few days later, there at my front door was this tall, elegant lady in a mink coat and I took one look at her. It was the first time I'd ever seen her in person. And I, and I, my heart stopped for a minute because I knew that that was Mame. What was a foot was a huge Broadway musical, which Jerry had written. And he, the, the only one at this point, who believed that I could play Mame. I started teaching her It's Today, the opening number and if he walked into my life. I thought the contrast between those two numbers would show everything that, that, that she needed. It gave me great confidence. Because if he felt I could do it, then I thought, well, um, if he thinks I can do it, I can do it. I made her a tape, and I said, go to bed with this tape in your ear, and I'll meet you tomorrow morning, and we'll, we'll go over it once more. Jerry was absolutely adamant that I, that I impress them with my prowess as a singer and also to act the role and so he said look what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the piano for you and she walked out on stage with her mink and threw it on a chair in a wonderfully uh, 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 dramatic and 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 uh, and theatrical gesture and she heard this arpeggio and she went light the candles get the eyes off Roll the rug up. It's today. The most exciting thing in the world. And Jerry was overjoyed. I mean, you never knew anybody who was more supportive of an actress at that moment than Jerry. It was a lovely thing to see a great actress emerge as a great musical star. She became the, the darling of Broadway musicals, and she won four Tony Awards two in shows of mine, Mame and Dear World. Jerry's next three shows, Dear World, Mac and Mabel, and The Grand Tour, were not considered successful. The decade of the 70s was difficult, but everything changed one day when Jerry went to the movies. I went to see a film called La Cage au Fall at a little art theater with my friend Chuck. And I walked out of that theater into the daylight, and I said, this is going to be my next musical. I won another Tony Award, and I had a five-year run, and it was one of the most joyous experiences I've ever, I've ever lived through. One song from Lacage, I Am What I Am, has become particularly meaningful to the gay community. I didn't really know how that song affected the gay community until a gay pride parade, a float, came by, and I Am What I Am was blared out of that flow. And everybody in the group that I was in stopped, and I saw people crying. And it was one of the great moments of my life, and I had no idea until that moment how, how important that song was. These days, Jerry remains one of the busiest people in show business, traveling the country, speaking to college students about musical theater, buying and completely redesigning houses like this, his current home in Beverly Hills, spending time with his partner, and writing his next musical called Miss Spectacular. I follow him implicitly. The, he was handed so many different talents. The range of the man is unbelievable. I don't think Jerry has ever uh, been given the credit that he, that he should have. 
over these many years because he's an extraordinarily good lyricist and he's also a great melody spinner. I mean, there's no question about it. When somebody writes me a letter and, and says, when, when my housework gets too, too overwhelming and when the kids are really, I, I turn my, my MAME album on and I sing We Need a Little Christmas with, with, with Miss Lansbury and I get through the day that way. That letter made me cry because that's the stranger that I made sing the way Irving Berlin made me sing that night that I went to see Annie Get Your Gun.